Hey everyone, Joseph Sangle here, committed to help you live a fully funded life. And today I want to talk to you about inflation and whether or not you watched our short intro video, if you've just landed right here, you want to know what you can do to address it in your own personal economy, you're in the right place. And so I hope you've carved out about 20, 25 minutes here to really listen to this and see how you might be able to apply it to your own personal financial situation. Now inflation is happening. You've heard about it. You see it happening. Here's a basic example. And you know, I went to KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken regularly. I love Kentucky Fried Chicken. And they had the $5 fill up box. They had commercials about it. It was the $5 fill up box. And, and you know, I got the original recipe, the 11 secret herbs and spices created by the Colonel Harlan Sanders. By the way, for an insp inspirational story, for those of you maybe feel like you're getting a late start towards retirement, he started KFC with his first Social Security check at age 65. He had nothing else. And he, he, when he passed away, he, he died a multi, multi-millionaire. And it was unbelievable. But I love the, the Colonel's chicken. And this $5 fill-up box, it was amazing. It comes in a box. It's got, I get the dark meat, so it's got a leg and a thigh. And it comes with mashed potatoes and gravy. Woo! And a biscuit. And they give you this chocolate chip cookie that sits on top of the hot mashed potatoes and gravy. And so it makes it all gooey and gooey. It's just, it's just unbelievable. And, and you know, it's $5. It was a great deal. It even came with a drink and it came with Pepsi, not as good as Coke, but it's still pretty good. And when I went through the drive through line recently, I noticed they stopped saying the $5 fill up. Well, I found out why they charged me $7 and 49 cents. That, that's a 50% increase, 50, not 15, 50% increase. That is inflation. And so think about another example. How has inflation affected you at the gas pump? You know, and a gallon of gas in 2020 averaged $1.79. Fast forward two years later, I, I recently had a fill up at $4.59 a gallon. If you look at California, it's in the $7 range. That is inflation at more than a 100% rate. In some cases, more than 200%. And so let's look at a definition of inflation, just so we understand it. And so in, in the course of this, I'm going to talk about what inflation really is, what it's happening, and how you can take steps to help your own personal economy during inflation. So here's the definition. Inflation is the decline of purchasing power of a given currency over time. So it's the decline of purchasing power of a currency over time. So the dollar is buying less. So why are we experiencing inflation? Well, there's this thing called the quantity theory of money. And so I want to show it to you. And it, it's this connection. They taught me this uh, I, in, at Purdue University when I studied engineering. Uh, I didn't do too good in engineering classes, but I loved economics. And I took this macroeconomics class, and it's about big economic pictures, not our personal finances, but of governmental, of worldwide economics. And one of the theories, the quantity theory of money, is this, and it's been proven true for decades. And so it says that if money supply goes up, lots of money available, easily lent out, people can get access to money, well then that will necessarily cause inflation to go up. Because if money is easy to get, people are willing to pay more money for things. And if inflation goes up, well the way to control inflation is to start to constrict money supply and the way to do that is to increase interest rates. If you think about it, if you have to pay a higher mortgage rate, well then you will not make as high of a purchase of a house because people, when they're buying a house, they don't care how much the house is so much as they do what is the monthly payment. And that monthly payment you can afford at a higher interest rate means you can purchase less house. And so money supply goes up, inflation zooms up, interest rates go up. Well, when interest rates go up, then the money supply starts decreasing, it goes down, which in turn drives inflation down because the supply side starts to exceed the demand, right? Demand went down, so supply, even if you didn't keep increasing supply, at some point in time, there's more supply than demand. How do they, how do they balance that? They sell for less, and then over time, interest rates get lowered. And so when you hear about the Federal Reserve adjusting interest rates, Make no mistake about it, that has a personal effect on you and me. 
And, and let's talk about this money supply thing. Have you noticed that money supply over the last couple of years has been amazing? Almost every single American has gotten money. Even our kids have gotten money. You know, there was the CARES Act cash that was issued in April and May of 2020. And then there was what we call in the office here, we call it the Trump parting gift, the, the cash that was issued right before he left. I think it was around $600 per person. And, and then we had the Biden bucks, as we call it, right as he came into office in the Family's First Act. It gave the rest of the $2,000, $1,400 per person. I mean, it was somewhere around $10,000, $15,000 per family member. Businesses were awash in cash. They got the payroll protection program cash twice if their, if their income had really been decreased. And they also, many of them have access to something called the employee retention credit. So money has been everywhere. $3.2 trillion of it. And as a result, people got easy money. They raced out. And many people did save it, but a lot of people raced out and bought stuff. They consumed. And so they didn't really care what they were paying in because there was so much demand all of a sudden for consumer electronics, for vehicles, for, for uh, freezers and refrigerators and for hot tubs and unbelievable quantities of things. Well, that drove up prices because demand was so high that some producers could increase prices. That caused inflation to go up. And now as I'm recording this, Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell has increased interest rates and he has signaled that he is willing to do so at least six more times in this calendar year. Let me tell you, that is going to cost a lot for anybody who's borrowing money, whether they're borrowing money to buy a car, whether they're borrowing money to buy a house, whether they're borrowing money to buy a boat, a four-wheeler, dirt bike, whatever it might be, to a home renovation project, home equity loans, it's going to tighten up money supply. And they're doing this to get the desired effect to tamp down inflation. And that's the quantity theory of money. And that's what is happening before your very eyes is you're going to see that it is going to be more difficult to get access to money because interest rates are going to go up. And so inflation creates challenges. I want you to know that inflation also creates opportunities. And so I want to talk about both of those here and how it pertains to you. Let's start with inflation creates challenges. There are steps that you can take to address these challenges. And one of those ways that you can do it is to reduce your expenses. Reduce your expenses. Now, I want you to think about this because this is more than just, hey, I'm going to reduce expenses for now for a month. When you think about inflation, inflation, you need to think of it in terms of a year or two or longer. Sometimes inflation sticks around for four or five years before they fully get it under control. And because America is not the only nation that has printed money and handed it out to its citizens and made easy access to money across the, the board, across the world, I suspect it's going to be four to five to six years. And so when I'm talking about reducing expenses. I'm talking about kind of permanent adjustments in your lifestyle for a while. Now, no one likes to hear this, but I'm here to help you live a fully funded life. And one way to make sure you live a fully funded life is to make sure that you make major adjustments when you see major economic things at, at uh, afoot. And we know that things are going to cost more. Your gasoline is going to cost more. Your food bill is going to go up. The cost of travel is going to go up. Hey, and if gasoline goes up, it affects the cost of every single thing you buy, goods or services. So let's talk about ways that you could restructure your monthly expenses. One of them is you could sell a vehicle. Uh, you know, right now in my household, I happen to have three vehicles. I have three of them. Now I keep one of them because it's a 1997 GMC 1500. And you've heard me talk about, if you've listened to several videos or my teaching, I talk about this beautiful vehicle that has the worst underpowered 2.6 V6 that's ever been put in a truck. Uh, it, probably an engineer like me with a 2.64 GPA put that in there. But you know, that truck, you know, I have to carry insurance on it. I have to pay property taxes in the state of South Carolina on it like $17, but it's not in per year, but I do pay property taxes. I also pay maintenance fees. 
and I have to replace tires from time to time, which I recently did. And my daughter borrowed it recently, as in the day that I recorded this, and she brought it back, and now the, the door won't lock. You know, but she didn't do it, Dad. She didn't do it. So, so maybe you could sell a vehicle. And I'm pondering, saying, do I need this vehicle? Because it can help me eliminate the insurance cost, the taxes, and the maintenance of it. And it will free up space in my barn. Now, another way to reduce expenses is to think about a storage unit. Do you have a storage unit? Many people have storage units. It's amazing to me how many people have storage units just stuffed full of stuff. Here's an idea. Could you sell that stuff and then close out the storage unit? Now, I'm not saying you have to do this. I'm just offering suggestions. Plus, there's something very, very wonderful to the soul about clearing out stuff. Uh, another thing that you can do is look at your subscriptions. Hulu, Disney+, Netflix, all of these different types of providers are subscription-based revenue models for those businesses. And my question is, even if you are using them, can you live without them? Could you free up your time and use it for something better? And so this could be a time where you could reduce expenses and reclaim time and money. So subscriptions, can you, can you reduce it all the way down to one of them? You know, I'm right now going to cancel Disney Plus and I'm looking at canceling Netflix because I don't need those in my life and I can free up time and they keep increasing prices on me. And, and I've got lots of other ways to get access to media. Another thing that you can look at is a gym membership. You know, I, I'm a runner, so I don't do a lot of lifting, I run. And so I like to run outside. Is it wonderful on a rainy day to be able to go to the YMCA? Yes, but in times of constricting uh, extra free cash in my lifestyle, right? Because inflation is eating necessary stuff like food uh, and is consuming more of my budget like gasoline, well, then other things are discretionary and the gym membership could be discretionary. Uh, is there a way that you could have a home gym and save a ton of money? Lots of people learned that they could do without the gym during the pandemic. Another way to save money is to pay off debt. You could pay off debt. Focus right now. Intensely focus on eliminating your credit card debt. Uh, finish paying off a vehicle. Finish paying off the student loan. Pay off the furniture you owe or the person that you owe. Pay off that debt. And when you pay off a debt, think about the payments that you make on your debt. Like, like I'll wait. You can think about them. I'm going to walk you through it. How much do you pay on your car payment? How much do you pay on the truck payment? What's the student loan payment? What's the credit card payment? The furniture payment. Right? You add all those up. If you can pay just one of those off, well, that will free up that money to use for other things and allow you to continue to prosper even in the face of inflation. And that's one reason why we teach on the Fully Funded Life Ladder uh, about achieving rung number four as soon as possible, paying off all non-house, non-business debt because it creates margin in your life. And so lowering expenses, another way to do it is to, you, we were talking about eliminating expense. We could talk about lowering a monthly bill. Uh, let me tell you some practical ways that you could do this. You could do this right now, today. You could pause this video and go do it right now. One way is to get new insurance quotes and, and some tips on this. Your, your home or renter's insurance and bundle it with your car insurance. If you've not gotten new insurance quotes in the last two years, you're paying more than you should. I, I mean, 15 minutes or less could save you. Well, you already know that, right? Guess what day it is? It's hump day. There's the gecko, right? And it may be with Geico, but I recommend that you get quotes from two name brand companies and one independent insurance agent. And here's some tips. Don't tell them what you're paying right now. You want, you want a deal. And the average person, have you noticed all of the commercials say, hey, if you switch to us, Progressive, Liberty Mutual, uh, all, uh, you know, farmers insurance, all the different ones, all state, nationwide, State Farm, all of them say, if you switch to us, you'll save five to $700 a year. The reason they can say that with such confidence is they know that they're increasing prices on their existing customers. They do it automatically. They've done it to you. Go get new quotes. 
you'll, you could save $50 to $100 a month or more in your insurance cost. Another way to lower a monthly bill is to change your TV or internet provider. Right now, I'm going to get a new internet provider. Now, one reason is because I have DSL. Like, like the late 90s, early 2000s DSL, that's the best internet in the country where I live. But we have recently been able to get Verizon unlimited through a little hotspot, and I'm switching that. It's actually less than what AT&T charges me. So I'm calling and getting that new thing set up and canceling my current internet provider, and I'm gonna save money and get better service. I think you could do the same thing. Let me give a tip. Before you call your cable provider or internet provider, go online to your current provider's website and look at the offers they're giving new customers. Call them and say, hey, I'm looking to change unless you can meet these costs that you're offering to new customers. And they'll say, well, I'm sorry, that's only available to new customers. And you're like, well, let me help you understand something. Uh, I'm gonna become a new customer for someone else if you don't help me save money. And then use these words, say inflation is happening and, and ask for a better deal. They'll say no. Then tell them, hey, I watched this video with Joe Sangle and, and he said to call. And they're gonna say, Joe who? And, and then do what you know, I'm really going to say to do, which is to call and say, I need to speak with customer retention and tell them, look, I need a deal and tell them I may be not able to get exactly what you offer a new customer, but I need something better. And I can tell you right now, you're going to get a better deal. And if you don't go to a new provider, I guarantee you, you will get a better deal. And another way to save money, lower a bill is to transfer an existing credit card balance. Now, we want you to have no credit card balance and to pay it off every month. But we know reality for many people as they're climbing up the ladder to a fully funded life is that they have a credit card balance. And so I encourage you to roll that credit card balance over to a 0% balance transfer credit card offer. You've surely got an offer this week in the mailbox, in your email box. Uh, we have a running list of them on our website at I was broke, now I'm not under the next steps area. And you can click there and you can just apply and put in your credit card information and they will give you approval or disapproval answer within 15 minutes. And I love that because you can move a 21.99% credit card balance to 0% in 15 minutes. And that can greatly lower what your monthly payment is and lower your monthly bill. Another way to lower your expenses is to delay a purchase. Delay a purchase. Say no and not now for as long as you possibly can. This isn't so much fun. I know it's not fun. But if you're addressing inflation, hey, one way to make sure you navigate that is to say no and not now for as long as possible. Get all of the utility out of the item you have. I know that washer and dryer are making a weird noise, but are they still washing and drying? You know, say no and not now and close the door and turn up the music. You know, uh, I, I encourage you, say no and not now for as long as is safely possible. If there are wires sticking out of the tires in your car, you can't say no and not now, right? Go get new car tires, please, right? But delay a purchase. There, it's amazing. I delayed buying a new truck for 15 years. You know, many of my friends have had three or four trucks, five trucks even, since I bought the truck in 2001 as a four-year-old four used truck. I've been able to say no and not now for a long time. I recently finally said yes. I had said no long enough. But you can delay a purchase. Another way is to become more intentional with every dollar. Yep, you could stop it now and say, it took Joe about 18 minutes to get to the budget. I'm telling you, you should prepare and, and put a detailed monthly budget together every single month. That's how you maximize money at all times, even in the face of an inflationary environment. Now, there, there are other ways that you can take to address challenges as well. And it's not just lowering expenses, it is the result of lowering expenses, and then that is to build your savings. You know, there's several ways you can think about building your savings. But one of them is a tax refund. Many of you are getting a tax refund or just got one. Put it in savings. 
It's a great way to stave off the effects of inflation. If you're getting a bonus, put it in savings. You receive a financial gift from a family member, put it in savings. You can sell a possession. I had a buddy, I was in his garage just last weekend and he has a Harley in there. Actually, it was a Honda. It looked like a Harley, uh, but it's actually a Honda. And he has not driven it in like two years. And I told him, uh, when are you going to drive it next? And he's like, I don't know, but it's hard for me to break up with it. And I get that feeling. I know it. But he's paying insurance on it. He's putting plates on it. He's going to have to maintain it because non-use is the worst type of use possible. He could sell that possession, put that money in the bank. Another thing to do is to build that monthly margin. That monthly margin by reducing or eliminating expenses, well, that helps you build your savings. And the reason I want you to do that is that helps you address the challenge and it also allows you to be ready for the opportunities. You know, inflation creates opportunities. And the steps you can take to capture these opportunities, well, one is something called dollar cost averaging. And dollar cost averaging, the definition is this, is that it's an investment strategy in which an investor divides up the total amount that is going to be invested across periodic purchases of a targeted asset, like a stock or a mutual fund. And they do this in an effort to reduce the impact of volatility on the overall purchase. And the purchases occur regardless of the asset's price and at set regular intervals. And so let me show you an example of this thing called dollar cost averaging. And so month one, month two, month three, month four, you had $1,600 to invest, but you chose to invest 400 every single month at the first of the month. Well, in the first month, the price per share of the stock, let's say in this example, was 80 bucks. So you got five shares. Well, month number two, that went down by $5. So you were able to buy the next shares at $75 a share. The next month, it was down another 10 bucks to 65 bucks a share, and you got even more shares. Month number four, price had recovered to 85 bucks, and you invested $1,600 total. Well, in month one, you bought five shares. In month two, with the same amount of money, you bought 5.333 shares. In month three, you were able to buy 6.154 shares. In month number four, you bought 4.706 shares. So instead of getting just 20 shares at the outset, you now have 21.193 shares. And the reason this matters is it allows you to see that the impact is much greater. You would have only owned, you know, if you had, if you had been able to purchase it at $80 a share in five, and if you were able to be able to do this over time, you know, you have 21.193 shares. The average price per share comes out to be $75.50 a share. If you'd bought it day number one, all 1600 bucks, it had all been at $80 a share. That's what dollar cost averaging does. It avoids you having to try to time the market. And, and they've done studies, this is for real folks. They have done studies between people who do this all day, every day. They try to time when to buy stocks. They put them up against guppies. You know the little fish that swim around the tank? And when guppies come up and bump the surface or blow bubbles on when to buy a stock and the guppies have won like 50% of the time. And that ought to tell you, and it should tell me, hey, trying to time the market, that's not a good thing. I've had a lot of people reach out to me and say, Joe, you know, I'm not scared, but I'm scared. What should I do? Should I pull all my investments out until things get better? And I say to them, well, let me tell you this. If you pull things out, then you have to make two good decisions. You have to make a good decision on when you pull it out. And you have to make a good decision on when to put it back in instead of just one time, which is to leave it in there and dollar cost average it. Here's some other steps you can take to capture opportunities is to build your reserves margin. Stack cash. You know, highest interest rate, those higher interest rates, they're going to drive down prices. Now, the key word here is eventually. So as interest rates go up, Demand, mark it down. I know it seems crazy. If you've been in the market to buy a house, I know you think I'm crazy, but demand's going to decrease. It's going to decrease. And decreased demand will, over time, inevitably result in an oversupply. Oversupply drives competition, and competition, that reduces prices. My suspicion is it's about 12 to 16 months away. 
cash reserves margin will provide you opportunities to acquire investments. I'm thinking real estate. I'm thinking stocks at a discount to the current prices. And here's the note, a lack of cash reserves margin. Like you don't take this, this warning and you don't stack cash, not having margin. It may even prevent you from even seeing the deal. It is people who have the cash who will see the deal. And so here's the final step that you can take to capture these opportunities. And I just wanted to do it by remembering the basics. These are basics we teach all the time at Fully Funded Life. And the first one is the five-year rule. And that is if you need money in, in less than five years, if you've got money invested that you need in less than five years, it should not be invested. You need to pull it out and put it in savings. Put it in an envelope, put it in a jar in the yard, put it in your safe, put it in the bank. You have no business having that money invested. But if you don't need the money for at least five years, you should continue to invest it. That's the five-year rule. The reason people panic and race to pull their money out of investments when they're faced with market turmoil like inflation is causing is because they have money invested that should not have been invested. And they're going to practice that little known form of investing called buy low or, or buy high and sell low where they lose money. The second basic is dollar cost averaging, consistent investments over a long period of time. Continue to contribute to your 401k, your 403b, 457, SEP IRA, SEMP IRA, whatever your retirement account strategy has been, continue to do so, continue to get the match. Another basic is to live below your means. And a budget, of course, helps immensely with that. When you live below your means, then you have margin for inflation to eat up a little bit of that, and it really doesn't affect the way you get to live your fully funded life. And the last basic, is diversification. Have a wide ranging investment portfolio because that helps prevent massive losses. This is why we like mutual funds and why we like broad ranging stock purchases as well as real estate, which is outside of the stock market so that you're well diversified. We also include precious metals, a little bit of cryptocurrency, but diversified investment strategies. And so that's it. Inflation is going to happen. You can't stop that, but you can stop the effect or at least mitigate the effects of it on the way you get to live your life by taking these actions. Hey, we provided these on a PDF. We'll have a link to that underneath the video and you can print it out. You can just check the boxes on which ones apply to you and take those steps. But I did want to say this as we wrap it up. We offer a membership program called Fully Funded Life. Some of you are members of this. Others, this is the first year hearing of it. But the reason we love Fully Funded Life is we're able to provide unlimited 30-minute coaching appointments for people with their personal finances. And if you have individual questions with your personal finances and about how the effects of inflation and what you could do, if you need somebody to look at your budget to help you address debt, hey, I encourage you to check out fullyfunded.life. It is a great way to get courses, to get challenged, to get coaching and be a part of a community. And when you join, we would love to be able to help you navigate your specific situation. Thanks for watching and being a part of a fully funded life network. <music>